Good luck, Shua Tov. We're starting a new chapter today in the Path of the Just, chapter 19. Bever Chelke Achasidus. We're learning the different elements, the different aspects of Chasidus, or piety. A pious person, we learned, is somebody who goes above and beyond the call of duty in his service of Hashem. While Precious, the previous um, section that we learned about, was abstaining from uh, things that could lead one to a negative prohibition, Chasidus is going above and beyond in reference in regards to the positive uh, commandments. So let's start, um, I'm sorry, uh, Precious was a few um, attributes ago. Okay, page 339 in the Art Scroll edition, which we use. Chelke Chasidus Haroshim Shleisha. There are three main uh, divisions, aspects of Chasidus, of piety. Ha'echad b'maisa, one is an action. Hasheni b'oifen hasia, two is in the way one does the action. Hashlishi b'kavana, and third is in, in, is in his intent. Ha'chelik orishon b'maisa, afhu yischalik l'shnei chalakim. And the first aspect of actions is actually in itself divided into two parts. Ha'echad b'mesha b'en adam l'makom, v'hasheni b'mesha b'en adam l'chavero. The first is between the aspects between man and God, and the second are the aspects between man and his fellow. We know that all of the commandments in the Torah can generally be broken up in two categories. One is ben adam l'makom, one is ben adam l'chavero. So ben adam l'makom would be between man and God is putting on tefillin, holding a lulav, uh, things like that. Ben Adam Lechavero is returning a lost object to a friend. Ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha, loving your friend as yourself. And similar things like that. So we're going to find that Chasidus, being pious, a pious person, applies to both mitzvos between man and God and mitzvos between man and man. Very often when we think of a pious person, the image which pops into our head is somebody who is praying all day, and uh, afflicting himself and fasting in a very austere, uh, you know, monk type of person, which actually the Ramchal said, that is mistakenly what people think of Chasidus. Chasidus, a pious person, isn't just pious in the way he acts between himself and Hashem, but also is pious in the way he acts between, be, uh, between himself and others. And we will now detail that. Hachelik Rishon, Shabar Rishon, the first part of the first uh, element that we're talking about. is how a person acts between himself and Hashem. kim A chassid, he fulfills all of the commandments and every aspect of the commandments and all of its details uh, to the best of his ability. And this is what the rabbis say are the, the meaning referring to the secondary parts of the mitzvah. The Amru Sha'ari Mitzvah Ma'akvin Asaparanios. The secondary parts of the uh, of the mitzvah prevent from f- prevent bad things from happening. So the Chassid, he doesn't just try to fulfill the basic uh, mitzvah so that he's Yotze, as they say, but he wants to fulfill every single aspect of it. Now, an example that he brings on the bottom here, that the Magia brings, is uh, is Lulav. In lulav, the main part of the mitzvah is just to hold it. You just hold the lulav and you fulfill the mitzvah. However, we know we also shake the lulav. So the Gemara says that the shaking of the lulav, which isn't even part of the, isn't even the main part of the mitzvah, that actually prevents uh, bad things from happening. Prevents the ruchos ros, slalom rayim. It prevents. Uh, it brings blessing upon a person. It brings blessings and prevents bad things from bad things from happening. So not only does the chassid try to fulfill the main part of the mitzvah, but he tries to fulfill every single aspect of the mitzvah. Just as an aside, you know, people ask why there are so many details in Judaism, right? Every law, you know, every mitzvah in the Torah has books and books and books and written in exactly how to fulfill it. So there's two important things which I think uh, people, we often forget, is that when you have a lot of details in a mitzvah, and we have a lot of ways, we really have a lot of ways where we can serve Hashem. That means every part of our physical existence is an opportunity to serve God. When we fulfill the mitzvahs and all of its details, we get schar, we get reward for it. Meaning we can steer every part of our life to holiness. It's not Judaism isn't just a religion where, you know, once a week we say, I'm going to inject my life with a little bit of holiness to make myself feel good. But rather in Judaism, one has the opportunity 
to dedicate every single aspect of his life to God, which brings sanctity to his life and fulfills his mission as a Jew. Something which, on Purim is coming up, the Jews reaccepted the Torah upon themselves, and uh, hopefully, for those who come to the Derech Hashem Shir, we'll talk about how Purim really embodies this idea of a Jew accepting Torah and living his life to serve Hashem, and that how really that uh, really that is a Jew uh, fulfilling his uh, his purpose and living his life to the fullest. So when there's so many details in the mitzvos, it allows us every single opportunity, every part of our life to serve Hashem. When we wake up in the morning, we say Moda'ani, then we wash our hands in a specific way. We go to the bathroom, we recite a blessing, then we thank Hashem for, uh, you know, for uh, for keeping us alive. So already, as soon as we get up in the morning, we have that opportunity to take our mundane existence and sanctify every single aspect of it to get close to God and bring holiness into our lives and live according to our purpose. Not only that, but when one, when a person keeps halacha, keeps Jewish law with all of the details, it actually helps him develop better midos, better character traits. The reason is because when a person follows all of the details of the mitzvos and all of the halachas, he's doing that even though maybe he doesn't feel like it right now. You know, he might want to do X, but the, the mitzvah, the halacha says, you know, he fe just finished eating and he wants to go to bed. But the halacha says he's supposed to bench. And he has to, he has to bench now. And he has to do it in a certain way. And he has to have, try to have kavana. So what he does is he overcomes his selfish desire for self-indulgence to just go to bed and fulfill his need right away. And he forgoes that to fulfill what God wants uh, of him. So when a person forgoes his desires for another purpose that improves character traits. So that means when he's dealing with another person, he'll be more able, hopefully, to overlook someone who slighted him and overlook an urge he has to have revenge and say, you know what, what I want right now isn't so important. The Torah commands me to respect somebody else. So when we follow halacha, we really are learning to train ourselves to not indulge in our personal desires whenever we want to and learning self-control. And that attribute of learning self-control applies to all areas of life, improving one's character traits, also in the way he deals with others. But we're learning here that a chassid is a person that fulfills every aspect of every mitzvah. Ki afal pi sheguf ha mitzvah nishlam, so we said he even fulfills the secondary parts of the mitzvah. So even though the main part of the mitzvah is fulfilled, zulasam ukfar yatzah and he fulfilled the mitzvah, right, he gets a check mark. When you just pick up the lulav, without even shaking it, you get a check mark. You did it. So certain people, they fulfill the mitzvahs. You know, they just do it. They ate matzah, the, the least amount that they have to, and they get a check mark to fulfill the mitzvah. But the chassid, on the contrary, he wants to do as many mitzvahs as possible, and he seeks out opportunities to do mitzvahs. And he doesn't want to just fulfill it to the basic the basic uh, lowest level. He wants to fulfill it in every way possible in all the secondary and other parts of the mitzvah. Now, so I think that's a, also a general outlook in life. How do we view mitzvahs? How do we do things? How do we view things that we have to do? You know, we don't want to be like those people that uh, view doing mitzvahs as paying taxes. You know, some people, oh, I have to go to shul, I'll go to shul. Okay, I have to have a perm suda, I'll go to a perm suda. I have to clean for Pesach, I'll clean for Pesach. What a what a very sad way to live, right? It's not a it's not a very happy way to live. That you know, Judaism is just paying taxes. You're doing it out of guilt. You know, something that you have to do. But we when we learn these ideas and we learn how we learn about the holidays, especially the holidays, when we learn about them before they happen and we discover the meaning in the holidays and how they connect us to Hashem and the beauty in them, then we'll want to be like the chassid. We'll want to observe every part of the mitzvah as much as possible and every part of the yantiv. You know, so cleaning for Pesach could actually be, wow, now I'm getting to fulfill the mitzvah of bir chametz, of destroying the chametz. So in order that I could properly fulfill the mitzvah, the mitzvahs of Pesach, where God saved us and chose us as a nation, if a person has that in mind when he's cleaning, then he's getting mitzvahs when he's cleaning his car and, you know, connecting to Hashem. So really, if a person views it like the chassid, everything is an opportunity to sanctify his life, that's a much better outlook than just looking as, at Judaism as something that you have to do and paying taxes so that you... Don't feel guilty. Okay, that's the first part. The second part, that's how we deal between man and his fellow. And that is that the chassid seeks out, 
He wants to do good for others, and God forbid to do anything bad to them. And he wants, he seeks out opportunities to do good, to help others, when it's, whether it's regarding their person, their money, or their soul. So he's going to explain what these are. Beguf, his body. Shia mishta de laz or kol adam meshiyuchol. V'yakam asam eleim. The chassid, he tries his best to help everybody in any way that he's able to unburden them. V'huma sheshanino is what we learned. V'nosev ba'olim chaveru. A person should share in the burden of his friend. So in the bottom they point out, it just doesn't It doesn't mean here that Ramchal is learning this statement. It doesn't mean just to empathize with your friend. But if your friend is going through a tough time, a chassid will do everything he can to un, unburden him, to help him out. Perhaps if he's, uh, you know, on the simplest level, if he's carrying something, you help, you don't just like look at him, you actually help him, uh, you know, carrying it, or you uh, help him shovel the snow. There's a million things, obviously, you could uh, you could do. V'imagil ha'chaveru e'ezen nezip begufo, v'hu uh, yachalim noah oso, ola hasiro, yitzrach de la sosa, or if you see that your friend maybe will be damaged, uh, someone someone will damage him, you try your best to prevent that from happening. B'mamon, when it comes to money, l'sayo ba'asher tasegyado, you help, you help your friend if he needs help monetarily, as much as you're able to. V'lim noa mimeno hanizakim b'chol ma'ashiyuchol, and you take away anything that might damage his property. Kol shechein shi'archa ku kol minin nizakim shi'echolim lavo mechmasa, and especially a chassid will make sure that none of his property, anything that he has, will damage that of somebody else. Ben liyachid, ben l'rabim, whether... Whether it's to uh, an individual or to a lot of people, even if he, even if the chassid owns something where it's very unlikely that a damage will happen because of something that he owns, you know, maybe a dog or something, not a what do you call them, not a pit bull. Since the chassid sees there's a possibility that something he owns might cause damage, he'll prevent that from happening. He'll do his best to make sure it won't happen. The rabbi said, Your friend's money should be just as beloved to you as, um, as your own. I just wanted to share a story about this, about how, uh, how we have to treat other people's money. I, I read a story. In the Zerubel Yashiv biography, it's really good. It's called uh, The Guttel Hador. It was written by a, a student of Zerubel Yashiv, American actually, and he, I think he either lived with him or he spent a lot of time with Zerubel Yashiv. It's a very inspiring book. It's just a lot of stories of his personal interactions with Rabbi El Yashiv. And he shares a story. This is actually not about Zerubel Yashiv. It's about Rav Shach. He shares a story with Rav Chaim Walken. Rav Chaim Walken was a Rebbe in Orsameach, and he was offered a very uh, lucrative position, a prestigious position, at a yeshiva that was uh, in the settlements in Israel. And he accepted the job. So after he accepted the job, someone told him, you know, Rav Shach is against uh, people living uh, over the Green Line. And well, this job entailed him having to move, move there to live there. So this, um, th- this rabbi said, well, you know, I, I, better go, um, I better go speak to Rav Shach. Sorry, I just think my computer froze, I'm not sure. Anyway, sorry. So this uh, rabbi went to speak to Rav Shach, and he said, you know, I accepted this position on the on the, on the Green Line, and I, uh, beyond the Green Line, in the settlements, and I heard you're against that. Now, the reason Rav Shach was against it, because he felt, you know, Jews shouldn't be living there, because he doesn't want to, uh, he didn't want the Jewish people to antagonize the Arabs and start, uh, you know, increase violence and whatnot. So he went to Rav Shach, and Rav Shach said, you know, I'm, I'm personally against it, but you should, uh, you should go ahead. Okay, fine. So he said, well, accepted the, right, he's going to go work there. So la- later that night, he gets a call from Rav Shach's Gabbai. The Gabbai says, you know, Rav Shach wants to say, I wasn't giving you, uh, you, you a heter. Uh, I just, uh, I just wanted you to, want you to know that, um, that you should do what you think is best. So he was kind of like bothered, you know, it wasn't such a uh, direct answer. So he went, uh, he decided the next day he's going to go back to Rav Shach. He's going to speak to Rav Shach a, a second time. So he went to Rav Shach and he said, you know, I, I want to do what's right. You know, I know you hold that I shouldn't uh, accept a job on the other side of the green line where all the settlements are, but, you know, what, what should I do? So Rav Shach said, you know what, don't go. I don't think you should go. So okay. So he, uh, Rabbi Wolken said, I'm going to listen to Rav Shach. I'm not going to take the position. So he gets home and the next day a messenger came with an envelope from Rav Shach. Inside the envelope was three hundred dollars. What, what happened? Rav Shach felt that since he had indirectly caused him a financial loss by not taking this lucrative job, he sent him three hundred dollars of his own money. And the envelope, those envelopes kept coming once a month to Rabbi Walken from Rav Shach with his three hundred dollars until he got a new position. 
because he felt, uh, Rav Shach felt responsible, even though, you know, he wasn't required to at all to uh, support this person. You know, in fact, this person you know, accepted the position before he even asked Rav Shach. But this person asked Rav Shach his halachic opinion, and he gave it to him, and his halachic opinion caused this person a financial loss. So because of that, he felt uh, that he should support support him and help him out with monetary. So that's how a chassid feels about another Jew's money. He feels that he wants to do everything he can to support another Jew, support his friend financially. Okay, so let's just finish up here with the last thing. Banefesh, that was, this is the third way we should care about our friend. You should make your friend feel good in any way possible. Ben min yinei to give him honor. Ben bechol shar yonim, any way possible. I know a rabbi, he is extremely careful to do things. He himself is a very prestigious rabbi, but when it when he sees other rabbis, he gives them honor. When he sees other people, he wants to give them honor. He even treats uh, uh, young young people like this. I've seen how he interacts with uh, young people. He wants to give them honor to make them feel good. Anything that you know if someone would do to you, you would feel good. So you should do it. Anything that you know that would make your friend feel good, you should do it. All the more so you shouldn't make him feel bad at all. In whatever way it is. The general rule here is that the rabbi is exceedingly spoke about and praised it and our obligation in it. And included in this is running after peace. That that is the general principle, the good principle between man and his fellow, is to run after peace. Right there, machlokis fights, fighting is very very bad. Very spiritually is very damaging, and a person should do everything he can to avoid a fight. Now I'm not obviously not speaking about the times when there's a chalul Hashem and a person has to speak up, but most of the time when a person's fighting or when there's a dispute in a community, it's usually not that case, and it's usually better to be quiet. Obviously, everyone should have a rabbi they speak to to decide if it's important to get involved, not get involved, but most of the time, it's usually people's egos getting involved and fighting, and machlokas is a very, very disastrous thing for the Jewish people, and it's very important that uh, the Jewish people get along. So it's usually better in these scenarios to hold your tongue. Now, obviously, we're not talking about uh, where there's Chilol Hashem, Perhaps there's a group that's uh, trying to hurt Jewish people or trying to hurt others and trying to uh, change Judaism, things like that. Then, of course, you have to speak up. But talking about, uh, you know, things not of that nature. But anyway, it's okay. So we started learning about the elements of Hasidus and piety. And a pious person does everything he can, whether it's mitzvahs between man and man or mitzvahs between man and God. He tries to fulfill them to the best of his ability and tries to fulfill every aspect of it. And not only does he, is he kind to his friend, but he runs to find opportunities where he can help his friend, where he can help people. He's always on the lookout. You know, uh, my Rebbe told me once, we spend most of the day thinking about ourselves. But how often do we look at somebody else and say, well, you know, he looks a little sad today. I wonder what's wrong. Maybe there's a way I can help him. If we try to change our attitude just a little bit, then I think we'll be on a good path to becoming Hasidim. I wish everyone a beautiful week and a Freilich and Purim.